Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show uh, we will be focusing on the Egyptian national projects and one of which is the new Delta. Now President Sisi yesterday inaugurated the Future of Egypt project which is adjacent to uh, or part of the new Delta about uh, one uh, one million and fifty thousand for Dan's part of 2.2 million for Dan's that is the new Delta will be following up on how such a national uh, mega project can help boost the agricultural industry and our exports as well that would boost the Egyptian economy but before we start doing that let's check out a few of the main stories making the news today and we'll start off with the Foreign Minister Semeh Shukri who today stressed on Egypt's full rejection of Israel's distortion of facts, saying that Israel is the sole responsible partner for the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. The minister's statement came on his commenting on Israel's foreign minister's remarks in which he called for reopening the Rafah border crossing and accused Egypt of causing the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Shokri said that Israeli military operations in Gaza's Rafah, which put the civilian workers' lives in danger, is the cause behind the inability to deliver aid into the Strip. The top diplomat denounced Israel's relentless attempts to blame Egypt for the unprecedented humanitarian crisis in Gaza, which was caused by Israeli's seven-month-long spontaneous attacks against Palestinians. <coughs> Also, the Arab League ministerial meeting in preparation for the 33rd Arab Summit kicked off in Bahrain with the participation of Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri. Shukri headed Egypt's delegation that attends the meeting on discussing and preparing the agenda of the summit in its final form. The agenda includes the Palestinian cause and the situation in Gaza and its updates. The meeting on Tuesday also tackles developments in Libya, Sudan, Somalia, Lebanon, Yemen, as well as the Comoros Islands. The ministers also probe means of preserving the Arab national security and upgrading efforts of combating terrorism. And Arab League Secretary General Ahmad Abu al asserted that the practices of the Israeli occupation forces in Gaza is a full crime and stigma to the world that accept these crimes to take place and extend for months. This came during the opening session of the Foreign Minister's preparatory meeting for the 33rd Arab Summit chaired by Bahrain, where Abu al stressed on the necessity of the joint Arab action to put an end to these practices in addition to supporting the two states visions and creating a Palestinian state on the 1967 borders. Meanwhile, the Arab League chief confirmed the need to hold serious talks to stop the war in Sudan and reach effective resolutions regarding Libya, Yemen and Syria. These were the main stories making the news today, but now uh, focusing our attention on tonight's topic, let's check out this report regarding President Abdel Fattah Sisi inaugurating and following up the developments of the Future of Egypt project in the New Delta, and we'll be right back. President Abdel Fattah Sisi reviewed the necessary provision of facilities and services, especially in the electricity, water and irrigation sectors. For the future of Egypt projects in the New Delta, as well as agricultural development projects in Fayoum, Minya and Beniswif, Saneb al Soro project in Aswan and the Dafka project in southern Egypt. This came during the President's meeting with the Prime Minister, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli, Minister of Electricity and Renewable Energy, Mohamed Shekhar, Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation, Haini Swilam, President's Advisor for Urban Planning, Major General Amir Sayyid Ahmad, Head of the Office of Engineering Authority, Major General Ahmad Il Hazazi, and Executive Director of Future of Egypt Authority for Sustainable Development, Colonel Dr. Bahe Il Ghanim. President gave directives to continue enhancing efforts to benefit from the successes 
achieved by the project so as to contribute to realizing the country's strategic goals in developing the agricultural sector and achieving a boom in the cultivated area so as to ensure food security in the country and protect it from international fluctuations in addition to increasing national income growth rates. President Sisi emphasized the importance of providing quality agricultural products at affordable prices for local markets and increasing export rates. The meeting also highlighted the need to strengthen efforts to achieve strategic objectives in developing the agricultural sector, ensuring food security, increasing national income growth rates. The meeting dealt with following up on providing the necessary needs for facilities and services, especially in electricity, water and irrigation sectors, for the Egypt's future projects in the new delta, agricultural development projects in Fayoum, Minya and Venezuela, amongst others. In southern Egypt, this comes within the framework of the state's keenness to provide high-quality agricultural products to the local markets at affordable prices for citizens. Meanwhile, Minister of Finance Mohamed Maid said the fiscal policy works to achieve comprehensive development at the economic and social levels, despite challenges and shocks to the economy. Egypt has experienced remarkable progress in the provision of infrastructure in all areas, including transportation, telecommunications, power generation, water and sanitation. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by His Excellency Dr. Mungi Badr, the Minister, Plenipotentiary, and Board Member of the Egypt UN Association. Dr. Badr, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thanks to you, and good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, Your Excellency, now, we, we spoke about yesterday, and today we're following up on the inauguration of President Sisi for the Future of Egypt project. Uh, part of the uh, new Delta National Mega Project. And away from the agricultural specificities of this National Mega Project, let's focus on the, the infrastructure work yeah. uh, that is obviously related to the development uh, of the whole country. Yeah. Now, over the past few years, we've worked on tunnels, yeah. roads, axes, uh, bridges, everything. But how can this translate, or how can we make the best use of these national mega projects, the agricultural mm -hmm. sector, for instance, and make use of this sort of transportation network to be able to spread all the, the products and the agro products in Egypt and abroad as well to be exported? In fact, it's a very heavy topic to speak about infrastructure in Egypt and also its relation with economic development and its relation with attracting foreign investment and moreover mm -hmm. with economic development in Egypt and also enlarging the, the, the scale of society and enlarging the scale of elite in our society. Number one, investing in sustainable basic infrastructure, it's improving living standard in Egyptian society. Quite simply, without infrastructure, we would not have health society. Mm -hmm. Without infrastructure, you don't have industry, you don't have agriculture. And also, we can say that Egyptian government already spent more than 10 trillion Egyptian baht for infrastructure. This huge amount of money already, uh, we insist to put pressure on society mm -hmm. to build for the future. Infrastructure, it's equal sustainable economic development. Infrastructure, it's equal excellent future for our, uh, uh, our uh, sons. And also, 
I watched yesterday the inauguration of harvest season. Mm -hmm. His Excellency, Mr. President al Fatah al-Sisi, he mentioned, I know very well that we spent a lot of money. I know very well we put pressure on Egyptian society. But because of what we did this, number one, we would like to save time. Number two, we would like to set up a, a, a strong economy. We would like to attract foreign investment. We would like to increase our export. We would like to try to reach sufficient in food security. Mm -hmm. And also, he, His Excellency, Mr. President, he mentioned that all this, what we did, it's not enough. We will do more. And also, we are going to move from classic sectors like uh, 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 agriculture and industry to put our nose in technology industry. What His Excellency Mr. President he mentioned by technology industry, he means that we should invest in uh, IT and the AI and also we should invest in bioengineering and also we should invest in a space economy. All this, it's an industry for future. Maybe some Egyptian understand very well the message of Mr. President, and maybe others doesn't understand, and he still concentrate on how much I'm going to have in my pocket, uh, I need uh, food, and something like that. But still we put a challenge on Egyptian society. What this is a challenge? This is a challenge we should explain to our society that all this infrastructure projects, it's for your son, for your daughter, because we want them, when they grow up, to find place in schools, in university, and also easily to find a job opportunity. Uh, moreover, Egypt it has a unique location mm -hmm. and this it put you regional pressure, international pressure and also our Egyptian society would like to yani, finish this transit period mm -hmm. very fast. Fortunately or unfortunately we have some profit or we gain uh, some profit mm -hmm. from international crisis but unfortunately the last conflict between Israel and Palestinian people it bring to us a lot of problem mm -hmm. a lot of problems because we should uh, prepare our economy to any urgent action number two because of uh, Yemen what happened in South it's affect our air from uh, uh, foreign currency by 50 percent Suez Canal. Yes. In the meantime, the problem of Sudan, Libya, Yemen, Somalia, and all these files, I think it will be discussed or, or already discussed by uh, Arab foreign ministers by today and uh, I think they already approved draft resolution for the summit which will be held by coming Thursday. Yes. So uh, foreign Egyptian policy it always balance between local and regional and international uh, aspects. Uh, number uh, uh, two I don't want to, to yeah, and explain more yes. in infrastructures and its relation, but just to refresh your memory that infrastructures we did it in uh, roads, bridge, new uh, smart uh, cities, mm -hmm. uh, sea and the dry and uh, ports, uh, ports. Mm -hmm. uh, number uh, four tunnels you can reach Sinai now in, in, in no time. Yes. Uh, number five, we start to concentrate, to explore 
our natural resources by not allowing to export it as a raw material, but it has to be uh, yani manufactured mm -hmm. items. Uh, uh, besides that, uh, education, health mm -hmm. sector, uh, also I can mention uh, subway and the electric traction, railway sectors, shipping, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, I, I, we mentioned land and the dry port, mm -hmm. river transport projects. This we try to refresh again to use River Nile. Yeah. This is the most cheap transportation uh, uh, means. Uh, means. Well, Dr. Bad, do you feel, I mean, speaking of the the, the transportation and you've mentioned the, the infrastructure work in terms of dry and uh, sea ports, if the conflict in Gaza is constituting a problem for the Suez Canal, can we see an opportunity in terms of maybe using the infrastructure work uh, of the Alexandria port and Abu Ir port, mm. maybe trying to export or, and use these ports, uh, not as a substitute, but we'd sort of really overload these uh, ports in terms of exporting, for instance, from the, uh, the harvest season of the Future of Egypt project. Can we make use then, uh, make use then of these new ports and refurbished ports of Alexandria and Abu Ir and maybe trans uh, export to Europe, for instance? Long time ago, mm -hmm. we didn't uh, have uh, any renew in our seaport. It was as it is. So that's why releasing goods, it takes between one month to three months, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, exporting to neighboring countries, it takes a lot of time because facilities are not enough, bureaucracy, it's very bad, and also, unfortunately, we, we pay a lot of money because of the delay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, number three, we have two seas, Mediterranean Sea, and the Red Sea, yes. and unfortunately, we didn't use both of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, after 2014, after His Excellency Mr. President uh, came to his office, and he mentioned that we should explore all our natural resources, uh, and also we should develop, not only for today, no, for tomorrow. And this, uh, uh, we call, it's a very aggressive, Mm -hmm. uh, decrease that to look for future and also in the meantime because Mr. President he has a good relation with Egyptian society they understand him because he is very clean and clear and the direct president mm -hmm. he used to mention that we choose the hard way for future we should work together okay in this point, I would like to mention one point for Egyptian private sector, that government started to invest in infrastructures because it's not a profitable field. Mm -hmm. So, in this now, we invite private sector to come to lead economic development in future. And Mr. President, he mentioned yesterday is that it's a good chance for Egyptian private sector to come and to help in economic development, especially in industry. And His Excellency, he mentioned that private sector is very clever in management, mm -hmm. is very clever in updating, and also uh, 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 they can use very well the resource. So we uh, want to stress this point private sector now his participation in uh, uh, national and uh, economic activities it's around 20 or 25 percent mm -hmm. we would like to increase yeah. this percentage to 60 or 65 uh, but uh, private sector uh, in egypt should learn that we have investment law it's for private sector but not only for egyptian but for arab and for foreigners. 
-hmm. they can come and to invest. Is it a competition? Yes, it's a, it's a competition because Egypt is a member in most of international association and uh, uh, organization. And you cannot close your door. No. This it's era already finished. Don't think about import substitution. No, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Egyptian society by nature like traveling, like contacting other mm -hmm. culture, like uh, uh, to compete. Because so I, I, I would like to use these abilities of Egyptian societies to compete. And this is the first time mm -hmm. in modern history of Egypt that we have all the tools, all the resources of future. Because now economy, a change from uh, economy of natural resources mm -hmm. like oil, like gas, like steel, like phosphate, yes. etc. to economy of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the now economy of knowledge, the main element is man. Yes. It's yours. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, we have 60% of our society, they are yours. So, first time, we have the tools of development. First time in our modern history, we have the, the ability to compete. And also, in fact, I'm not exaggerating if I mention that Egyptian youth, they are very clever in competition in IT and AI. And now, one of the biggest international company managed completely by Egyptian. Mm -hmm. So, yani, but what we need? We need incubator yes. for you. Uh, your Excellency, now in your career you were responsible for making a lot of trade agreements uh, between Egypt and many different countries. Now, when you walk into uh, on the negotiation table to uh, work on a trade agreement with uh, within, within any embassy or any country, what do they require in terms of, are they looking for partnership with the public sector, are they looking at private sector partners, did it change from now as opposed to uh, five or ten years ago? I mean, when you work on the trade agreements, what are they looking for, what do we have to offer? Do we have a strong enough private sector involvement? Mm. Do they trust more the public sector, more than the private sector? How does it work? In fact, f uh, when we go to for negotiation mm -hmm. in trade agreement or investment agreement or uh, avoidance of double taxation, mm -hmm. any kind of this agreement, all this agreement increase the trade and, uh, and the investment between the countries. And uh, in this negotiation, there is no difference between public sector mm -hmm. or private sector or joint sector. Mm -hmm. The same. All in front of me, the same. Even they are no, if the owners are not Egyptian, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But the factory is located in Egypt, mm -hmm. so there is no difference. I don't, I don't think about the nationality of the owner. Mm -hmm. yes. I am thinking about the factory itself, mm -hmm. the company itself. This number one. Uh, number two, as I mentioned that we are a member in all international organizations yes. and this put some uh, condition, mm -hmm. no discrimination between national sector and foreign sector. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, 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 this it's very clear in front of me. Number uh, three, mm -hmm. there is foreign investment which lead your economy up mm -hmm. and another foreign economy which lead you down. Mm -hmm. So your skills as a negotiator, how to choose, how to choose the sector which lead you up, not lead you down. Mm -hmm. So this is very important and uh, it needs an expert people yes. to think about this. And also it needs somebody who has a vision and uh, to think about the future, not today only, but mm -hmm. for uh, the future. And also uh, you're strong when you go in negotiation, you reflect the strong of your country, 
the strong of your army, the strong of your economy, the strong of your society. This it's, it will reflect when I am coming to the table to negotiate. But maneuver it's very important mm -hmm. when you come to the table of negotiation. And in fact, we have in Egypt very clever uh, expert in negotiation. And uh, also, uh, we need to have a link between the old mm -hmm. and the young people, yani for continuation and also for uh, the accumulation of experience. Yes. This experience in negotiation, it doesn't come from books or from internet, mm -hmm. no. It's it an experience. Come, yeah, mm -hmm. it's experience. So, you should use the experience of experienced people yes. to transfer it to the young. This is the challenge of our, uh, not only government, but business society, uh, political parts, mm -hmm. and also private sector. Yes. This is very clear. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, the private sector plays a very big role in the sustainable development of Egypt. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. The private sector is key and core to Egypt's sustainable development and social cohesion. Minister of Planning, Hala Saeed, stated that the National Structural Reform Program has four main pillars. First one focusing on the real side of the economy, which is manufacturing, agriculture, and information and communication technology. Minister noted those three sectors are private sector-led, in addition to two other sectors in which Egypt has a competitive edge, which is tourism and logistics. According to the minister, enhancing the role of the private sector and raising efficiency of the labor market are also pillars of the structural reform program. She said the government is focusing on minimizing the gap between demand and supply, adding the government was looking to the social safety net, not from the financial poverty, but from multidimensional perspectives. She reiterated focusing on social safety net is ensuring safety and sustainability of the country, which is also very important for the private sector to ensure stability of the country. Minister highlighted the implemented reforms focusing on two phases. First one, which starts on 2016, government focused basically on the fiscal and monetary side, in addition to investing in infrastructure. She stressed the significance of investing in infrastructure because no private sector would come to any country that had no road gateway that had a port network. She further affirmed the government had invested lots in infrastructure, focusing on the fiscal and monetary side. She said the second phase focuses more on the inside, enhancing the role of the private sector. She announced the private sector shares investments has increased from almost 30 percent to around 40 percent over the last two years. Egypt has a ceiling on its public investment in order to give way for the private sector to invest, adding that the private sector shares in GDP have increased since 2014 from 60 to 64 percent to 71 percent this year. She added the private sector also shared employment, which has reached 80 percent coming up from almost 65 percent. As uh, for structural reform to enhance the role of the private sector, she said the government has simplified its own procedures in the investment law and amended the competition law. She added Egypt has issued a law to abolish all privileges given to other institutions and has issued the state ownership policy. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with His Excellency Dr. Uh, Mungi Badr. Sir, now, you've mentioned the Arab League resolution that uh, we are uh, following up, and you've also mentioned the link between the political situation and how it affects our economic life. And right before the report, you also spoke about how a foreign investment can lift you up and how another foreign investment can drag you down. So can you please link up the, the political aspect, the political life and how it affects our economic activity and what's the how can you spot the difference between a foreign investment that will actually drag you up or pull you down? Okay, let me uh, explain one by one. Number one, uh, our foreign uh, ministers already approved the draft of resolution for the summit. 
summit will be coming Thursday. Mm -hmm. And this draft concentrate on the crisis in Yemen, Somalia, uh, Sudan, Libya, and of course the most important crisis is the conflict between Israel and the Palestinian uh, people. Mm -hmm. uh, number uh, two, uh, they are thinking how to have economic integration between Arab countries. Uh, number three, they are thinking to have Arab situation against all this crisis, especially what happened right now mm -hmm. between Israel and the Palestinian. We hope uh, the summit will conclude something which can force Israeli side to stop its attack to Rafah city. Mm -hmm. This is number one. Number two, uh, also, we don't call for war, no, we call for peace, mm -hmm. but strong situation for Arab countries definitely will force America and Israel to be a little bit, a bit more wise mm -hmm. and also to think in future. Because of what? I am not exaggerating if I mention tomorrow or the day of tomorrow the future for Arab countries, not for America or not for Israel. Uh, it's not me who mentions this, many thinkers mention this. Uh, no, so, if the leader of Israel, they are a little bit wise, mm -hmm. they should sh think about future. They should set up a, a, a peaceful relation with their neighbor. Mm -hmm. We used to live with Jewish people in peace, long time. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think it will be from stupid to, to, to think like that against the Palestinian. Mm -hmm. And also uh, today or tomorrow, it will be separate Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we don't want to yani, uh, have more uh, yani, injured or dead people from Palestinian side or Israeli side. Uh, Egypt, it's a very balanced uh, in, in its foreign uh, policy and we call both parties to be uh, a little bit more wise and to sit together to reach ceasefire very soon. Mm -hmm. Related uh, the summit and the relation between policy and the economy. This sometimes policy leads economy, mm -hmm. and on other it's side, the other way around. economy mm -hmm. leads policy. It depends on the situation, but mm -hmm. economy needs strong policy. Economy needs a strong uh, country, mm -hmm. and this strength of the com of the country. It's not military. No, it should be all fields. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, number two. Without economy, you cannot continue in future to be strong in military or in policy or in foreign policy. So why America is very strong now and they are controlling most of the, 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 the world because of its military uh, uh, strength and also because of dollar. Mm -hmm. Dollar now it's equal like uh, military uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. Maybe in some cases it's uh, it's the impact. It's mm -hmm. more than military side. Uh, this is number uh, two. So in case of Egypt, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we are emerging country, and we balance between all these uh, elements, mm -hmm. and also we concentrate on peace, and also we concentrate on economic development, and in the meantime, we have very strong army. Yes. Uh, number three... Or what num about the foreign investment? The, I mean, if yeah. we are looking to export and uh, we're looking to attract foreign investors, how do you spot uh, a, f a bad foreign investment that will drag the economy down? Don't forget mm -hmm. that foreign investment is the main factor to develop um, uh, southeast of Asian countries. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the Seven Tiger. Mm -hmm. It's because of uh, uh, foreign investment. Also, economic development in China because of 
foreign investment now in India foreign investment so it's a foreign investment it's very important mm -hmm. in case of Egypt it's a very very important because of what saving rate in Egypt it's a very small mm -hmm. it doesn't help you to make economic development or to invest in agriculture or industry so you should attract foreign investment and sometimes you should request for a loans mm -hmm. yeah sometimes you should request for a loans okay uh, let me back on uh, Egypt three days back in United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi Egypt already winning for the sixth time that it's uh, the top of North Africa country and the Middle East in attracting foreign investment mm -hmm. for six years so what you think about that mm -hmm. yeah we uh, the, the, the point now shall our economic policies on the right track or no for attracting foreign investment this number one number two in fact uh, do you think that this will actually lead Egypt high on the saving power as you've mentioned yeah, I think so mm -hmm. I think so yeah uh, because now Egypt they attracting direct investment and indirect investment and direct investment is this it's a very sensitive point mm -hmm. and we should little a bit uh, uh, yeah, be careful about mm -hmm. this yeah yeah because we receive last f yeah, in a few weeks a lot of hot money mm -hmm. a lot of hot money so yeah and we hope uh, central bank mm -hmm. and the minister of finance to deal with this money very wise and to avoid what happened last time last time in 2022 mm -hmm. in one day 22 billion dollars already immigrated mm -hmm. from Egypt and this is one of the reason which uh, mm -hmm. bring to us very sensitive uh, situation mm -hmm. the shortage of hard currency and I hope I hope they can yeah, and they have a lessons yes. from the past so let us go back to uh, uh, foreign investment and its role I can say yeah, and, uh, attracting foreign investment uh, needs necessary and sufficient condition necessary it's it, what I mean by this side mm -hmm. I mean that you should grant tax free you should grant land with reasonable cost and your labor should be clever your your market internal market mm -hmm. should be big enough and we have big market and also you should have a many trade agreement with foreign countries as you mentioned before mm -hmm. and I can refresh your information that we have foreign trade agreement with a total population of one uh, billion and the 20 uh, and the 250 million mm -hmm. because we have free trade agreement with Europe with Turkey mm -hmm. with Comessa with Mercosur and also we have a protocol of cohesion with America mm -hmm. and also we have free trade agreement with Arab countries mm -hmm. so all the, 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 the number of population it's more than one yes. billion so we have uh, uh, local market very big and also we have uh, a broad market and also uh, very big mm -hmm. so this help us to attract foreign investment uh, so I can say uh, uh, one uh, sentence if you allow me mm -hmm. that countries of the world are not satisfied with competing to increase investment but rather than uh, this is the type that leads the economic and the social development uh, and do not to deepen the crisis and the gaps that already exist international literature and many other uh, 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 element which sometimes put barriers in front of you when you request for foreign investment investment in fact it leads to sustainable economic development while description risk to the bottom is applied to countries that rush to attract investment that only 
achieve resource depletion, mm -hmm. deepening social gap, and increasing foreign debt. This is the three point which foreign investment lead you to yes. down and you should care about mm -hmm. this. If you allow me, I'm going to repeat it again yes. to resource depletion, mm -hmm. deepening social gap and increasing foreign debt. Yes. You should be aware. If you have this kind of foreign investment, you they should mention away from it. No. You have the red card. Yes. No. Red card. Your Excellency, uh, we only have one minute left, but you mentioned something that is uh, the space economy yeah. and its relation to uh, the Earth economy. So can you please elaborate on that? Because we're still talking about investing in, uh, in artificial intelligence and the information technology. Are we ready to embark on uh, space infrastructure? Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure, we are going to use this in industry. If we are talking about industry, mm -hmm. it's infrastructure. If you call about real estate, infrastructure. If you call about uh, uh, agriculture, it's infrastructure. And uh, I, 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 I remember now uh, the word of Mr. President Abdel Fattah Sisi. When he mentioned, when we, we, we already paved the way for, for the roads, for six lane or nine lanes and and they mention and they mention no no this it's the road to Sahel mm -hmm. or to Al Alamin Gidid he mentioned mm -hmm. no 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 this for agriculture sector mm -hmm. for uh, 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 to facilitate transportation of goods between uh, 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 from the field to the uh, harbor yes. uh, for space economy in fact space economy it will add two trillion dollars to the world economy by 2035 mm -hmm. and uh, uh, now uh, space the uh, space forum he mentioned what increasing investment in space economies uh, it will increase in future and this will create killing competition between the big countries because of what they discover on the moon mm -hmm. they have helium-3 and this is its nuclear mm -hmm. foil and uh, this one ton of this helium cost you five billion dollars. Yes. So now big countries, mm -hmm. they are now, they are talking how to set up a link between the space economy and the earth economy. Yes. And we would like to, uh, to learn about this and we would like to participate because yes. this is very important for our new generation. Yes. But ladies and gentlemen, a lot of development needs to be done, not just in Egypt, not just on Earth, but also in space. So the road is long, but it's definitely something that Egypt should be a part of early on. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank His Excellency, His Excellency Dr. Mungi Bed, the Minister Plenipotentiary and Board Member of the Egypt UN Association. Dr. Bed, always a pleasure having you with us on the show. Thanks for you and good night. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Steve. Thank you for joining us.